Hello everybody, welcome to Short Shot Archery. Anthony here and today I'm going to talk to you about uh, the Hoyt Formula X and I'm going to briefly touch on the Velo Slims because there's not too much to talk about there. And the reason behind this is is because I really just got to check out the bow at the ATA show. Uh, Hoyt did not have one to shoot. They had their entire compound line it seemed like uh, available to shoot but you could not shoot uh, their target recurves. Uh, so yeah, uh, that wasn't really uh, cool, and it was. I felt like it was kind of silly because, you know, you you want to know how the bow performs even if it isn't the same weight that you train with. Uh, you can tell a lot from shooting a bow, and that's something that actually uh, Win Win did. So uh, stay tuned for those videos because uh, they actually let me shoot their bow. Uh, so now let's get into uh, the Hoyt. Formula X and my thoughts on it from just checking it out. This is the first time I've checked out this bow, uh, so these are the things that came to mind. I wrote them all down so that I could put this video together uh, later. Of course, I'm you know I'm back home now, not at the show, and uh, that way I can share uh, these thoughts with you, and you guys can try to make a uh, decision on what you you know want to do if this is a bow you're considering purchasing or it's something maybe you want to wait off on until you hear you know what your friends and stuff have to say first off when you grab the bow you grab it by the grip because that's the first thing you grab and uh i don't know the the grip the grip wasn't that exciting like it's got this you know plastic rubber feel to it um the rubber part the rubberized uh you know part of the grip uh, it was kind of nice in a, in a way cuz your hand didn't slide as much but at the same point in time it's a you know it's like a $700 riser i don't know the plastic seems kind of 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 cheap and and chintzy it just seems like an easy way to segue you into oh by the way buy a grip that also now actually feels nice but it's going to cost you extra i don't know it just kind of seemed very like a la, la carte type of deal like everything that you actually want you got to you got to keep buying I don't know, at least for the grip section. Uh, there's other parts, though, that I did like uh, a lot more than that. I just, I don't know, I just felt like the grip should be better quality. Maybe when you actually shoot the bow, uh, it actually feels better. I pulled it back, and it wasn't anything profound. It felt like the Hoyt Alero when I pulled <laughs> that one back, uh, you know, before, too. It, it, it didn't feel like anything, oh, this is new, this is exciting, this is, like, overly smooth. But now on to the next point, the Limbolts, yes. The Limbolts are solid on this bow. Wow, the premium bow now has solid Limbolts again. And uh, that is really interesting because I thought the ones with the pivoting head were the way to go. I, I guess the market either spoke otherwise or... I, I don't know, maybe maybe this design, maybe this uh, setup of limb, maybe the solid limb bolt, it works better for this riser. I know from my experience, uh, the majority of people were switching away from the moving head because there was movement in it when you when you set up the bow. And uh, yeah, you don't want you don't want that. You want your equipment as consistent and as accurate as possible. And if that floating head's not always sitting correctly on the limb, you're getting uh, a slightly different limb alignment or something like that. And then you're going to be throwing off your shots downrange. So I'm really happy that they changed back to the solid ones. I think that's an improvement. Uh, they did seem to like slim them down a lot. I don't know if that is the design of the limb bolt itself, or they just feel confident that there is plenty of material there uh, to hold you know the limb and everything in place. And it, it, I would say it's mostly just the head of the bolt that is uh, you know that's that's thinner. It looks thinner at least. After that, we continue on to another positive point on this bow, and that is the uh, the paint job on it. I really like it. It doesn't seem uh, you know really cheap and you know not you know distasteful. Like it's 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 good, and they got all the spots. Like I was looking around, I was looking in all the cutouts and stuff like that. Uh, it really looks like uh, they coated this riser well uh, in some of the risers in the past. Uh, there has definitely been bald spots where you could actually see the aluminum. And uh, I, I think that's uh, that's pretty uh, unacceptable for such a, you know, high-priced, high-caliber riser and a company that has such a name in archery. So, uh, yeah, it was good to see that they got the, uh, the paint job right on these bows. And the one thing nice about it is too is that I, you know, I was, you know, I was touching it all over, and it doesn't seem like it really like soaks up fingerprints and stuff. So I would, I feel like 
the riser would stay fairly clean uh, throughout its its use. You know, depending on what you get on it, though, you know, you probably can like stain it or or, or whatever. Like you can do with with anything. But I think from like everyday stuff, it's gonna stay it's gonna stay pretty pretty clean. So that's uh, that's exciting because you don't want a dirty riser. Uh, now on to uh, you know the drawing back. I drew back the bow uh, with the Velos limbs. Uh, they were 36 pound limbs. Uh, nothing nothing crazy about it. It felt it felt like 36 pounds, and it, it felt like drawing back uh, any of the other Hoyt bows. Uh, it, it didn't seem like anything unique or special. Or it was wasn't like a surprise. I've I've drawn bows back in the past where they actually feel either heavier or lighter than the limbs actually uh, you know show, and uh, uh, this wasn't the case. It was eh, it felt the same. It it, it didn't feel like it was uh, assisting you in any way, or it was or the limbs were overly smooth where the whole drawing process was just like like kind of like like a dream in a way. Uh, it, it, it's, it's, it's hard to explain, but, uh, yeah, this is very standard. Uh, this is much, um, this is very much like my, uh, like my GMX, uh, this is very much like the GMX and other bows of that, uh, you know, similar setup, even though this is formula and not ILF, uh, it's, it, it felt about the same. So it's not like it's, it's not a bad thing, but it's not like, uh, whoa, this is, this is, this is something, uh, something very interesting. Also, while I had the bow in my hand and I was holding it, um, I really didn't notice a balance difference with uh, the bigger uh, like limb bolt sections because they're much larger on this riser than they are on your your normal riser, and uh, I, I I didn't I didn't notice I didn't notice a difference. It it, it felt the same. It, it didn't feel more balanced. Then again, it, it doesn't have all the accessories, so it's it's a, it's like a half baked bow here. There's no sight or anything like that. I I don't see why Hoyt couldn't just turn around to either fuse, which I believe is just a little branch off from Hoyt, or I guess the parent company. I could have it wrong. The, I believe Easton still owns Hoyt. I don't know why they can't just make up some like mock up accessories, just some one offs for. Uh, the bows that they're advertising, so that I can go and draw this thing back and get an idea on on how the weight's going to sit. You know, it 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 doesn't seem like it's that hard of a of a of a thing to do, especially for a company that has such a long history in developing bows and a, you know a reputation you know for a, a certain quality of product. You should try to showcase this. Um, with that too, I know some of this is like complaining, but there was also nobody there to even talk to me about the bow. I picked it up and literally everybody ran away. They ran away. They were like, oh no, it's a recurve guy. And they walked to the other sides of their booth. And this is this is not a small booth either. Like like they had fuse, so and which is mostly just I think it's just all hunting accessories now at this point. I think they've totally killed the uh, the competition line of that. I, I could be wrong, so sorry. Um, and then, you know, they had their hunting compounds and they had tournament compounds, but nope, nope, everybody ran away. Uh, and that was like, all right, I, I guess nobody wants to talk about a, a bow. It's, it's not a good way to, uh, to drum up, uh, you know, people that actually want to, you know, buy one for their shop or something, or I don't know. Anyway, I, I, I'm not in charge of that. I just make videos, but at the same point in time, I would have liked even more information, but yeah, nobody wanted to, uh even approached the subject. They just they just kept walking away. They started just talking to other people every time I came near. It was rather odd. So now on to the design itself. I don't think I don't think the design itself is too bad. I think they did a pretty good job, especially in uh, the like mid section of the riser. So well, not quite the midsection, just below and just above uh, the grip. I think that's a pretty solid build there. They didn't like overly cut out. You know, they didn't go crazy on cutouts, and the cutouts they did, they mostly you know stayed with triangles of some sort. Uh, it looks nice and strong. Uh, when you start getting up into where you know your limb is going to click in, uh, the back half where the limb actually clicks in uh, looks really good still, even though they have cutouts on the, the upper portion of that. They look great, it, it, it looks nice and sturdy there. The only concern I had is that little extra wraparound part up top. It probably doesn't do too much, probably just some like torsional stuff, so like uh, 
like because you have such a large dovetail, it probably helps maintain uh, that uh, that riser from uh, like twisting a little bit, like torquing over time. Uh, I don't know if that's exactly what it's for or not, but uh, nah, that that was kind of that was kind of thin. It was like starting to look like a skeleton. It's like feed that section a little bit more. Then again, I would hope that they've done so much testing on it that uh, that doesn't really matter. It's probably more of like an aesthetic thing where they're going with the look from the older bows. At the same point in time, it probably provides like minimum structural slash you know keeping that that uh, that limb pocket from torquing. Uh, and, you know, everything else that's actually more important and more, uh, you know, <laughs> of a necessity to have, uh, it all looks like it's, it's nice and, and beefy and strong. It's definitely a little bit interesting trying to get used to the look of having such large, like, limb pocket sections because for the longest time they've always been... Like like normal, I guess you would, you would say they weren't overly thin because they have an important job to do, which is to keep your limb uh, where it's supposed to be. And at the same point in time, they were never like this this wide. They were wide, man. Thick is in in 2019. That's a, that's what I'm that's actually what I'm saying. Thick is in. Hoyt is 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 supporting the thickness. Thank you. We uh we're, we're going pretty mainstream now. Um. Uh, with that though, uh, it really isn't uh, that bad of a riser. Uh, I, I really, you know, if it was between this and the Alero, I'd probably still pick up the Alero just because, uh, you know, I, I, I wouldn't want to buy Formula limbs. Uh, with that, uh, the limbs themselves, the Velos, I didn't notice anything like really great about them. Um, they didn't seem smoother than the last ones. Then again, I. I, I pulled the last ones back on, uh, on well the last Hoyt bow, that that came out. So that was that was last year. But again, it wasn't it wasn't anything. that was like wow, this you know it didn't knock your socks off. It it didn't do anything uh, great for you. Uh, it's nice that they kept uh, the logos and stuff on uh, that limb. Uh, they kept it more plain. I know in the past I, I've been told by people uh, that. They've they've gone too crazy with like the decals and things on their limbs, and they've actually caused uh, like warping and stuff with that. So uh, this looks nice and and simple, yet classy. It does look classy, and uh, I think uh, that's really going to uh, to pay off. Uh, on this one section though, they did make like the Hoyt logo on it oddly low, and it feels like it's falling off the limb. I, 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 I like from an artistic standpoint. I, I feel like it, it should be it should be further off like I don't know my, my OCD kicks in a little bit or something but it, it, it bothers me um, I know it, it's 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 trivial but at the same point in time it's it's, it's like a seven hundred dollar limb so uh, what's trivial at that point everything should be a functional work of art so uh, you can you can see why I'm probably a little more picky on uh, this particular uh, riser I, I expect the best it's Hoyt you guys got a name. Uh, you got you have to live up to it. Um, other than that, um, I will be checking out this bow again in uh, Vegas. So hopefully I can get more information there. Hopefully they let me shoot one. I, I've been asking now, you know, well, every model that comes out, just just bring one to one of the shows. I, I, I just want to shoot it. I want to get an idea. Win and win lets me do it. So why can't Hoyt? Um, other than that, I hope this... Uh, this video helps you out in, in trying to make your decision. Uh, for me, I, I wouldn't jump right into this bow. If you already have a Hoyt bow, I would stick with it unless you can't stand it. Then, you know, buy a new one <laughs> or, or go to another brand. Uh, other than that, I'm still a big fan. The Hoyt Alero, that is a, a finely crafted piece of equipment. I did a review on, uh, well, again, I did the same type of review on that last year definitely check that out i know this is getting a you know to be a lengthy video so sorry about that but uh thank you so much for watching please leave your comments in the comment section down below i'd be interested to see what other people have to say um and uh with that thank you for watching please like and subscribe and as always happy shooting